Hey, what is going on YouTube? In today's video, we are going to quickly cover 10 PowerShell commands that you must know today. So with that being said, let's get started. For the very first command, we're gonna go ahead and learn about GC or get content. Now what that is, is it allows us, this is a commandlet, and this is going to allow us to read out the contents of a file. Uh, so in this case, we have a gc-example.txt. So go ahead and we enter that. We're going to go ahead, essentially this is a CSV converted into a text file. Um, but here you got, you know, different columns and your different rows. So that's just a quick way to go ahead and read out a file. And the reason why this is important is because if you ever needed to read out a file and then do something with that file or the text in that file, uh, you will need to first start with uh, the GC. So for example, let's say we had an a IP listing, a list of IP addresses, and we want to go ahead and test if that IP address is online. First thing that we're going to do is obviously use GC. And then we have a list here containing of all the IP addresses in that list. So now the next command line that we're going to talk about, or the next command that we're going to go ahead and talk about is going to be the for each. And what that is going to do is it's going to allow us to loop and iterate through each of these addresses in here and determine if it's online using another one, um, command line test net connection. So with that being said, let's go ahead and we're going to assign that to a variable. So we'll do IPs equals gc now the gc is the, al the alias of get content and then we're going to go ahead and just do ip listing so now if we read out the ips variable we now have a list of that so the next thing that we want to go ahead and do is going to go ahead and loop or iterate through each ip inside of the ips variable so we're going to go ahead and do for each uh, we won't even sign that. We'll just do test connection. And then we're going to do IP. It should be just one. And then we'll have to close that out. So now we're just going to go ahead and iterate through each IP inside of the IP list. And we're going to test connection only one time. So the next commandlet that we're going to go ahead and use is going to be out file, out dash file. And that's going to allow us to write any information from the session or the terminal into an external file, such as a text file, allowing us to view this at a later time. So with that being said, if we go back to our previous example that we have here, so we had our loop iterating through each IP address in IPs. And we did a test connection with a count of one. So one thing that we could do, just to kind of highlight this. So let's do result equals for each. And then do quiet. Let's go ahead and back this up real quick. And let's go ahead and read out another file that's a little bit shorter. So there's not, that list had a little bit more IP addresses. So now if we do IPs, there's only a few IP addresses, three of which should be successful and the last one should fail. All right, so now if we go to results, we should see trues and falses. So these are saying that these passed. So the importance now we could go ahead and we could do results out dash file. And then if we read out that IP dash example, we now have that same um, result from the variable, but now in an external file. This could be another lesson for another day, but let's go ahead and kind of go on this example a little bit further. So instead of doing this inside of PowerShell, let's go ahead and use the ISC to write this script. So let's go ahead and just kind of copy this real quick, just to kind of get us back up to speed. So now we have the IPs. We want to do the short one though, so let's get rid of this. And then the next thing that we want to go ahead and do again is we want to get the results. But we're going to take it a step further, like I said. So in this case, now we have results. We could technically just do nothing here and just do N for null or something. to Kind of close it out, although it's going to be quiet. Um, but what I'd like to do next is so we're going to, again, iterate through each IP address inside of IPs. We're going to perform a test uh, connection. But what we're going to do instead is or in addition to this is now we want IP addresses, right? So the, the file that we have right now is not really useful. 
saying true, 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 and false, not really giving us enough information to find out what host is online and what host is offline. So what we could do is we could do test connection dash IP dash count and one. Um, and then what we could do here is we'll just assign this to a variable. So we could just say, uh, just do T, T equals test, blah, 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 right? And then if we do if T do something else, do something else. So this is saying if this is true, if the ping test succeeds, which will be true, this is a true statement, do something here. And then let's go ahead and do result plus equals to append. And we'll say and we'll just say IP, which is the one that we're currently iterating through is online. And then we'll just copy this down here, go into the else statement, and we'll say else or is offline. is offline. So now if we go ahead and save that and run this, we should be able to get a better list. Um, but first we have to write that out. So let's go ahead. This is closing this out. So if we go down here now, and we'll just do result. New example dot text. So let's go ahead and save that and run that see what we get. And as you can see here, I just went ahead and opened that file. Uh, although it's not pretty, it's just a quick example as how we could use it. You can see a, not the DNS server, for, DNS server for Google is online. Online, online, online. And then over here, as we know, it has failed. And it says offline. All right, so the next command that, that we're going to go ahead and talk about is going to be test net connection. So a little bit different than test connection. But with this one, what I use for it most is to perform a port scan on a Windows machine. Otherwise, if I was on a Linux machine, I might use Nmap. Uh, but in this case, this is a quick way to, to determine if the port is open on a Windows machine. So in my lab, I have an IP address of 192.168.1.151. It is one of my virtual machines and it does have SSH enabled. But if it didn't, or if I wanted to check if I was troubleshooting, I would go ahead and run testnet connection. So testnet connection, IP address, followed by the port 22. And as you can see, we have TCP test succeeded. Now, if we went and did that for, let's say, Google DNS server, we should be getting a failure. And just like that, we have a fail. Uh, so the importance, like I said, this is a quick way to kind of determine if a port is online. So if you're performing any troubleshooting or uh, just performing a port scan on your network, you could go ahead and do that. And you could also use this in combination with what we had just discussed. So let's say you had a list of IP addresses. Go ahead and throw that in a for each loop. Go ahead, loop through each one and perform a port scan um, and figure out if that port is online. The next one I want to go ahead and talk about is going to be get date. Uh, so this is important if you are running it in a script and you need to determine a date or perform a certain function based on a date. So one example I have here is if you go to my GitLab or GitHub uh, and my PowerShell script repository, I have a few uh, in here that I worked on over the years. Uh, one of them which is, I believe, in this one. I think it's in disable inactive. And in here we should have a commandlet. Nope, not this one. So in this one, so update account expir uh, expiration. Uh, so in there, we're going to go ahead and we determine the date. So we go ahead and assign a variable today's date. We assign it to get date. We format it. And then we go ahead and we use that later on throughout the script. Uh, so again, we do it again for account expire. We do get date and then we add it based on this variable here. And then we just kind of use that later on to determine what the new expiration date will be based on the current date. And the date uh, 365 days out. 
Um, but that's pretty much just one way or one useful example of how and why you would use get date. Or if for whatever reason you just can't access your toolbar at the bottom, just go ahead and run. Just go ahead and run get date, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It'll just pull it up for you, nice and easy, quick way to get the time and the date. Another useful one will be start sleep. So this is not really useful all on its own. So we just put this PowerShell terminal to sleep for 23 seconds. Not really that useful, but when you're using it in a script, for instance, when you're using it in a script, for example, maybe you wanted to um, wait for, if you're writing out like, uh, let's do, This is not really a good example of it, but it's just a quick way. And then you can do another one. So now if we run this, it'll kind of do its thing. It'll say write output, write into file. Well, that was a poor example. Um, did I put that there? I might have put that there. Um, so there you go, there's the example. So now it's gonna wait 10 seconds and then it's gonna save right output running into problems. Uh, this is not a good example, but the reason why you might use this is um, maybe you're running into API limiting issues where you need to only perform a certain amount of requests and within a certain amount of time. So you would go ahead and perform the API request, do a start sleep, wait the amount of required time, five, 10, 15 seconds, whatever it may be, and then go ahead and perform that request again. That's just one example. And this is just me kind of playing around with it so you can see how it works. This brings me to my next command line, uh, which I performed poorly here. So this should be, in this case, be right host. I do intermix them sometimes when it's something simple like that. Um, but really, right host would be better for this, as it is when you are going to write to the console and inform the user and not use this for any other reason later on. Whereas if you do write output, the only difference there is that you could go ahead and use that later on to manipulate that data if you ever needed to. And the last three that I want to talk about, first starting with get command. Uh, what that's going to do is going to go ahead and pull out all the commands that we have available for us to use. The command lists, the different functions that are in. Um, so if you ever forget anything, uh, but if you ever forget anything, you can go ahead and do get command. And then you can do something like, you know, and then auto complete until you can find it right error, and then you get more information about that command. So we know this is a commandlet, uh, but with that, the more important, let's say we wanna go ahead and we find what we need and we don't know how to use it. We're gonna go ahead and use the get help and then we'll do write error. And now we're gonna get the same documentation that we'd pretty much find online, but right here in our console, which is very nice. And last but not least, a very uh, useful tool. As you can see, I used the alias a few times, so if we do get alias, this will list out all the different ones that are available to us, and you can create custom ones later on. Um, but as you can see, if we do like add content, it'll be AC. If we go find GC or cat, here's another one, just like if you're using a Linux machine, you got the cat alias that will go ahead and run get content. Or if you find GC, you go ahead and get the same thing. GAL, get alias. MD for make directory, you get the point. This is definitely something useful if you're ever using PowerShell a lot, go ahead and run stuff a little bit faster with uh, using these here. So that's gonna close out today's video. I just wanted to get a quick video out there for 10 popular common commands or command lists that you will go ahead and use in the future. I do plan to discuss PowerShell scripts and functions and command lists a little bit further as we go forward in this YouTube channel, as I have done in the past. I do enjoy writing uh, scripts PowerShell scripts to be more specific in addition to Python and the other ones that I worked with in the past. So with that being said, that's going to close up today's video. I hope you were able to take something away. As always, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below and never stop learning.